Welcome to Because You Asked, I'm Barry Newsbaum. As the war news from the Middle East becomes more intense regarding the fighting between the various coalition forces and the fighters of ISIS, one group is constantly mentioned as a key player in the battle to eliminate the scourge of ISIS, the Kurds. However, there is rarely if any description of who they are and why they are identified separately in so many news reports. Today on Because You Asked, we will answer a U.S. soldier's question, who are the Kurds and do they practice Sharia like their Arab neighbors? This is an important question, especially during our 4th of July week, because unlike the Americans, the Kurds don't have their own country. Yet. To begin, let's take a look at Kurdish history. Where do they come from and what do they believe? Between 25 and 40 million Kurds inhabit the mountainous region straddling the borders of Turkey, Iraq, Syria, Iran, and Armenia. They make up the fourth largest ethnic group in the Middle East, but they've never obtained their own permanent nation state. In recent decades, Kurds have increasingly influenced regional developments, fighting for autonomy in Turkey and playing prominent roles in the conflicts in Iraq and Syria, where they have resisted the advance of the brutal Islamic State, also known as ISIS. So, where do the Kurds come from? The Kurds are one of the indigenous people of the Mesopotamian plains and the highlands is what is now southeastern Turkey, northeastern Syria, northern Iraq, northwestern Iran, and southwestern Armenia. Today, they form a distinctive community united through their race, their culture, and their language, even though they have no standard dialect. They also adhere to a number of different religions and different sects and creeds, although the majority are Sunni Muslims. In the early 20th century, many Kurds began to consider the creation of a homeland, generally referred to as Kurdistan, after World War I and the defeat of the Ottoman Empire. At that time, the Victorian, victorious Western allies made a provision for a Kurdish state in the 1920 Treaty of Surveys. Such hopes were dashed, however, three years later, when the Treaty of Lusain, which set the boundaries of modern Turkey, sadly made no provision for a Kurdish state. Basically, it left the Kurds with minority status in their respective countries. Since then, over the next 80 years, any move by the Kurds to set up an independent state was brutally squashed. Portions of the region are recognized by two countries, Iran, where the province of Kurdistan lies, and northern Iraq, side of the autonomous region known as Kurdistan Regional Government, or KRG, also called Iraqi Kurdistan. Kurds in their history were mostly nomadic until the end of World War I and the breakup of the Ottoman Empire. Today, Kurds make up about 10% of the population in Syria, 19% of the population of Turkey, 15-20% to of the population of Iraq, and nearly 10% of Iran. The Peshmerga is the 100,000 strong national military force which protects Iraqi Kurdistan and also includes many female fighters. So what about the question of Kurds versus Arabs? Well, Kurds and Arabs are mostly Muslim, but they speak different languages, they live in different regions, and they have different cultures. The Kurds, or Kurdish people, speak the Kurdish language. They are a multilingual people and speak two or more languages, sometimes even more. They all speak Kurdish as well as the language of the nation where they are from, such as Arabic, Persian, or Turkish. The Kurds living in the diaspora communities are fluent in three or more languages. For example, Kurdish Christians and Kurdish Jews speak Aramaic as well. Kurds are mainly Sunni Muslims, but there are minorities of Shia Muslims also living in numerous regions, for example, in Iran. There are also Shia Muslims living in southeastern and central Iraq. There's another community of Shia Muslim Kurds living in Turkey, Tunseli, and Sivas, etc. 
The most widely practiced Kurdish religion is Islam. Nearly all, or 98% of Kurds in Iraq, identify as Sunni Muslims, while the other 2% identify as Shia Muslims. Despite various religious fundamental groups in the region, Kurdish people and Kurdish Muslims in particular are widely recognized to be one of the few cultures in the Middle East that practice religious tolerance. In a move of religious tolerance and equality, the Kurdish regional government, or KRG, refused to accept teachers from the central Iraqi government in 2012 and declared at that time that Kurdish schools would be religiously neutral very progressive for the Middle East. The 25 to 40 million Kurds living in different regions of the world compared to over 300 million Arabs. Obviously, they are outnumbered by their Arab, Persian, and Turkish neighbors by over 10 to 1. Perhaps that's why they tend to be less fanatical and more accommodating depending on their immediate environment. It's impossible to answer conclusively if the Kurds as a people would all want to practice Sharia as the law for their lands because there are so many factions within the various Kurdish communities spread all over the Middle East. The KRG admits that its religious tolerance stems from a long history of suffering at the hands of their Islamic brothers. Both their suffering as well as their rich history have made Kurds particularly welcoming of other religions. The Kurdish people are not Arabs, but rather historically identify with the Medes, an ancient people described in the Bible. In fact, most Kurds were Christians long before they began converting to Islam in the 6th century. Thanks to David Wilcox, our veteran soldier for this great question and for your service to this wonderful and special country of ours. We appreciate you. Please keep your questions coming to American Truth Project and our social media on Facebook or Twitter. And if we select your question, you will get a special gift. You can also write to me directly by sending me an email to barry at americantruthproject.org. And go to our website where you can sign up to be on our mailing list so you never miss an important episode. Don't forget, it's free. We're here to answer your urgent questions because you asked. I'm Barry Newsbaum.